the project started in 1996 with Tom Charles. Mm -hmm. Tom Charles was a South Carolina State archaeologist who uh, really decided that we should go ahead and try to see if there's rock art in South Carolina. There were two recorded sites in South Carolina prior to that. Tom put an ad out in the paper and all the state papers saying, hey, I'm, we're starting this survey. If there's anybody interested in, you know, if you have something, I'm more willing, let's go check it out. We answered him because we had found a boulder on adjacent to our property that had marks all over it. We called Tom, he shows up at the house and he's looking at the boulder and he said, well, uh, it's plow marks. It's just a hit by the plow. And he said, but I'm going to look at a real petroglyph in just a few minutes while I'm up here. I haven't seen it in years. It's up on the Tougaloo River. So he took me to the Tougaloo Turtle. From that point on, it was, it was, yeah, that was it. So anytime he was in the field, I was with him. So I followed him for 20 years. It was a crash course in rock art, petroglyph research for he and I, because somebody, we had to learn how to find these things. It's not like the desert southwest where the desert varnish is chipped away and you can see the glyphs very obvious. Right, it's, the, it's not as easy. They're invisible here. You have things like lichen and yep. other things that grow on rocks. And so that's what we discovered in short order was uh, we're not going to find anything doing what we do. If you go out on a pretty sunny day like today, you're not going to find anything. Mm -hmm. And why is that? The sun just wipes them out. It's just like looking at a, at, a, at a highway, and this is the best example I can think of because I, 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 every day I'm reminded of it when I see this. During the middle of the day, a, a highway looks flat. It just looks smooth and flat. But you get late in the evening or early in the morning when the sun's low, you see all the undulations and all the marks on the pavement. And you can really see that, that thing is like a crinkled up piece of paper when the shadows are on it just right just like petroglyphs. You can't see them in, pure, in straight, in this part of the world with straight sun. You have to catch the sun low, or you gotta use, you gotta trick light into bringing them out. Whether you use water to get reflection, or you use um, shadows. That's, that's how you find 98% of what we found. This is a prime example right here, this site here, the Hagen Mill site. In 97, <clears throat> I wasn't on that trip, but Tom came up here, he, he and Dennis Chastain came out here and looked at this big boulder here at the Haygood Mill site on a pretty day just like today. And they walked away like, yep, yeah, there's nothing there. Mm. Five years later, on January the 1st, 2003, it was raining and drizzly, kind of a cool wet rain, cool day, misty rain day. I had never been to Haygood Mill in my life. We were just out riding around killing time and I came down the road and I spotted this big gray rock out here behind the mill and I said man that's a cool sight so I walked out on the gray rock and looked down and realized there were little human anthropomorphs all over it was covered with little people and so I literally called Tom at home and told him Tom you're not gonna believe where I'm at I'm at hey good mill and there are people carved all over this rock hey there's not I've been I've looked at that I said well y'all missed it there's people all over this thing the difference was when I come through, it was overcast and drizzling rain and the rock was wet. You don't go hunting petroglyphs on pretty days. You can go find probable sites. Our best sites were found on nasty days. I mean, it's kind of funny because I would take days off work and they'd be like, why are you, it's raining, what are you doing? It's raining and it's winter time. And Tom and I'd be out somewhere hunting this stuff. But these are some of the examples, some of the early stuff we recorded. Uh, most of this is, these are all my, a lot of these are anthropomorphic, mm -hmm. anthropomorphic forms. We get more abstract than anthropomorphs in South in South Carolina. We don't get a lot of human forms. We just don't. Do you think they may have um, some kind of a utilitarian purpose or purely <laughs> symbolic? I know it's hard to tell. So. Well, that is a very touchy subject in rock art research, particular Appalachian rock art research. There was some work done in. Pennsylvania or Ohio years ago and they basically put the stamp on it and said oh, all these are historic done by folks doing lye leaching or tar burning. We have absolutely proved that wrong because we found them on vertical faces mm -hmm. that there's you're not making lye you're not extracting tar that's not what this is used for. We found them as small around as that big and we found them as this big.
That one outside there, that was used for tar extraction sometime in its life. Was it created for that? I'm not sure, maybe it was. Tom's theory was that they were, and this is his common phrase he would say when he do this, it's like using a butter knife for a screwdriver. It works, but it may have not been what it was originally created to do. And so I have been all over the world and I've seen this same basic form from Israel, France, Europe, all the way to here. This line and circle thing in Israel and along the Sea of Galilee, they're used for olive oil extraction and fruit presses. In France, they're used for fruit, they're used for grape presses. Over here, they were used for tar burning and lye leaching. So I, I kind of tend to think there is absolutely a pre-contact aspect to these things. Are all of them pre-contact? I'm not sure. I doubt it. But some of them certainly are. Because we find I have them in relation to in relation to absolutely old rock art sites. They'll be what would fit typography, or what you would call a line and circle. And it's obviously not because it's you're sitting here on this site, this cupules and meandering lines, and all this. These people weren't extracting tar, or making lye. So know? there's something else going on. There's something else. Maybe going some on. other kind of process. Absolutely. Or some other kind of purpose. I think there's probably another process involved, and I do. I have seen some that would I would have to say were ceremonial or ritualistic or purely artistic because they're on vertical faces. But this site here at Hagen Mill is a pretty important site because it really does have all these human forms, which we don't have anywhere else. But it is absolutely anomalous for our survey to find this many anthropomorphic forms in one place. The whole site here at Haygood is different than anything else we found. It doesn't look like anywhere else in the survey. You are on a major migration route and trade route right here. This, the road that uh, actually went over this, this boulder was the road to Rosman, North Carolina. It was built in 1822 on top of, or right adjacent to, a Native American trail and road, that, and a game trail that went up on up, way up north. And so you may be seeing some evidence of a migratory route by some early people. I like to pay attention to the anomalies. If it's different, it seems like yep. that's something a lot of people might throw those out. As, no, there's you know, data it doesn't there. Doesn't fit. Yeah, it, but it, it tells doesn't us something. Fit. It doesn't fit. Yeah. Um, I did have a rock art researcher that had done a lot of work in the upper Midwest, with Shawnee, Pawnee, those upper Midwestern tribes. Yeah. They had a ceremony called a shaking tree ceremony. When this doctor saw our rock, he's looking at it and I said, you look puzzled. And he said, man, he said, I am puzzled. He said, if I'm in Minnesota, this makes perfect sense. This looks like upper Midwestern rock art. This looks like a shaking tree ceremony, you know, set up or displayed on the boulder. But I'm in picking South Carolina. There is absolute evidence of trade routes that went from upper Midwest all the way to Florida. And when the weather got bad, they went south. When it got hot, they went north. They migrated just like people do now. And so is this, a, is this an example of early migratory route, people coming through here and marking their migration? I have no idea. But I do know that the only expert I know in upper Midwestern rock art looked at it and said, yeah, this looks like something in Minnesota or Wisconsin. I like his theory because I have seen so much of this and uncovered so much of it. It is different. There's something different going on here than what's going on in most of our rock art sites. So it's got potential that we're looking at some kind of log of migratory routes because even when you study the figures on the rock you realize that this hand created these three or four guys some other hand created these three or four they're not all done by the same person they're all not all done in the same artistic design they're all anthropomorphs but they're all carved a little bit different they're all and and there is a pattern to it if you kind of look at it there's a one repeated pattern is you'll have three and one, three and one. And you'll see that there'll be, oh, there's a cluster of three, there'll be one over here. And there's some abstracts thrown in the middle of it too. 
but a lot of times the, these forms, if you really study the rock, you'll realize they're kind of clustered with one off to the side, clustered with one off to the side, but they're all carved differently. But it's, it's documenting something. It's not yes. just somebody out there doodling. That's, that's, I think that's the, the biggest thing I, I could bring out of this. In my opinion, it's not just someone necessarily killing time. They're, they're, some, they're telling a story of some sort. But these abstracts and the meandering lines of cupules are what we predominantly see. And even the stuff in North Georgia is different than what we have on this side, of the, what we would call the, the river, Savannah River system. It looks different over there. They get a lot of circles, cup and circles and that kind of stuff, almost like the stuff out of the, out of the UK. And their petroglyph form over there is very similar to what you see in North Georgia. You don't see that over here. We don't get those cup and circles while they get over there. So at some point there were people living here who were depicting the human figure. But very abstract. Dragly. Yes, very abstractly. And then this culture come through and they're drawing obviously anthropomorphs. These are people they're drawing, you know, and uh, without a lot of almost like what a kindergartner would draw a person to look like, you know, where these guys here, they were drawing these really abstract people, you know. So it's two different cultures. And then there's a third culture, of course, in all our rock art, which is the historic stuff, and it's always names, dates, initials, that kind of stuff. And that's yeah. probably post-contact. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's. That would be written language. That's post-contact okay. stuff. But these are the three men that started the whole Haygood Mill site. Mm. These guys here, it was raining. I walked out, stood right there, looked down at my feet and realized I was standing on top of these three guys. And I took a quick shot and called Tom, uh, Tommy and said, hey, you're not gonna believe this, you know. And so that's where that that's how this all started. And basically that was a wet, nasty day. And these guys turned out this rock's covered in stuff like that. But these are also, these are very obviously pecked. These are these are very, you know, definitely a pecked form. And then you get these guys here are similar, but not quite the same. And then you got the box people. These are completely different. And there's two of these on this rock. And what do you think is going on with the square shape or the rectangular shape? Many of the figures are very obviously male. So to depict the female, they, all they had to do was just leave off certain parts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but they say this could be a female. That is totally acceptable to me. Okay. I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, other than, it's a different form, a different hand did these. But these are kind of a variation of our line of circles that we recorded. And basically everything we found fit kinda in these general forms. Like we found 14 of these guys, these tree form, stick forms. This is the original first, arguably the first petroglyph cycle out of the Spanish rock. It was a line of circle with this V cut in it. And it's just on a flat face, kind of. So there's something else going on. This is kind of the similar stuff that you see in Georgia with the cup and line stuff. Mm. So, I mean, I, I see no evidence of this having been a, a tar burner or lilac. No, it, it doesn't is, look like it would work. It's something else. <laughs> yeah. Completely something else. Oh. That wouldn't work. No. <laughs> so we, we have proven, and, and this wouldn't work either, we've proven that some of this stuff is and is absolutely not what they, you know, they're, they're, they've got a different use. They are found in the United States up and down the Appalachian mountain chain. Mm -hmm. Once you get away from the Appalachian mountains, you really don't see them. All right. Until you get to the Four Corners region in Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and What's the other one? Utah, I guess. I don't know. You get in the Four Corners region, these things pop up again on buttes. And they're, they're, the theory there is they're generally pointing towards water. Be towards the ocean? <laughs> no, towards... Uh, just water. Just water sources. And without exception, every one of these we recorded are within 
20 yards of a spring or a bowl creek. If you find, if I find one of those, I can, even if I'm on a creek like this, you get off on here, you're gonna find a spring head nearby. You try to, I'm, I am an agnostic when it comes to these things. I will tell you what I think, but I am absolutely not gonna say I'm right because there are a lot of opinions and ideas and the people who carve these things are so far removed from modern thought and logic and rationality, we can't interpret their thoughts. We can look at their art and appreciate it, but I can't even understand the mind that created this. They lived in a completely different world under completely different rules. So I try not to interpret too much because we don't know. They had a life story that's totally different from anything we really understand. We can look at it and say, oh yeah, I've seen the pictures, I've watched the movies, but no, they, they, their art meant something different to them than we will ever understand. Okay, this is uh, the boulder. Wow. We built the building over the boulder. Uh, I I'll, I'll just get down here and show you. Yeah, if you want to come down, you can. Oh, I would it. love to come down. Yeah, come down we'll, okay. We'll try to shoot some of this stuff the best we can. The rock itself, you can really stand it up here. There's only one glyph you can spot. It's right there. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And that is pecked and then incised on top of it. So that is an older glyph. Now, originally, I can give you some light here. Shoot it like that, or maybe I'll just- Oh yeah, that helps, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that really makes a difference. Yeah. The shadows, yeah, I see what you mean about the shadows just popping out. Yeah. Now, if you look really close, you're standing right beside another anthropomorph. I that, see that. It is a modified, culturally modified natural feature. The, uh, or she, whatever it is, it was, it is the only figure on the rock facing the other way. The feet are facing back this mm, way. Another anomaly. Yep. But it, it goes, um, that's a crack in the rock right through there. Mm -hmm. And then they just added all the other stuff around it to make this human form, this little head, the hands. <laughs> so the they arm. made use of a crack in a convenient location. Yep. You're probably like, oh, a little less work for me. <laughs> yep, that's right. Wow. So this is the rock you were standing on on that crappy day. Yeah. And you would just look down and yeah, I was like, wow. Right out here, this is where I was standing right here. Standing right there where that cupule is. I spotted the cupule first. <clears throat> then I realized there were these three forms right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, yep. But there's, and there's probably the fourth one right here. There's probably a fourth that he's kind of chipped out. Uh -huh. But there was four figures right here. Three together, one off to the side. And you'll see that pattern kind of repeat as we go through this. Yeah, thing. so that's that three in one pattern you were it, talking it about. It pops up a few times on the yeah. rock. And there was something right here that's gone. You see it? See yeah, it? I see it. There's a, it's a, it's another, this is more of that abstract form that we see. Some sort of symbol or just yeah. some lines. But it's there. Wow. With a box with a little feet, uh -huh. kind of a triangle base is what we finally marked it up as. Oh, okay, yeah. Kind of see the line here and line here. And, <laughs> There's more going on. There's some stuff there, some little tiny peck marks. When I came out here on the first day, you could walk out, walk right here on top of the rock. There was soil and dirt all in here. The road bed was built in 1822. 22, 23. And it came right over through here, <clears throat> covered the whole rock. So this was all under the dirt. Mm. And most of this other was under the dirt. The soil level was somewhere around right through there and it went up. 
So that basically that part there was exposed, the rest of this wasn't. So you excavated the rest of it out? We excavated the rest of it out. This here was under, gosh, when you got down to there, you were four feet under the dirt, you know? Oh. But the road bed was here. The early pushback we received from the site and the survey was, the survey at this site was, okay, those were carved last week at the Watermelon Festival, you know? All right, well, how do we prove them wrong? Well, we got to find drawings under this road that was built in 1822. So we started removing the road. And the more the road we removed, the more drawings we found. So the rest of this stuff was encapsulated and covered in the early 1800s, right around the time of the Trail of Tears, the forced migration. Mm -hmm. So it gives a strong evidence of there being a a Native American component here, if not all Native American component. I mean, I, there's one one line of text right up there that says Toma, T-H-O-M-A, and it's in very plain, obvious, very nicely carved, letters are structured perfectly. Um, there's little drawings everywhere. Uh, we'll find some right here. Here's the box people. There's those two. Oh, yep, there they are. Yeah, it's amazing how you can't see them until you shine the light on it just the right way. Gotta be out. Yeah. That's right. And we'll play the presentation here in a moment. You'll right. see this stuff really jump. And this guy here, if you look really close, you see a form there. He has either been removed or enhanced by pecking. Mm -hmm. There is a theory, it's contrary theories. One is this, this enhancement. One is they were removing him, you know. So I don't know what was going on there, but there's a row of these forms on there. There's one, there's one right there. You can see an arm or something popping out. There's that. And then there's, yeah, there's three forms right there. One, two, three. And then there's one up here off to the side that's flaked out. So that's the three and the one, you know, so they tend to repeat. I don't have that correlating here. I've just got these two by themselves. I don't have three here. Yeah, this guy here, where we always, he's, he's the brain, he's lucky he's got brains. <laughs> so he yeah, does he have a brain. Yeah, right out, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we see that. And this guy here, he's like Michael Jordan. He's, he's sitting here and he's shooting a free he's throw. Dunking. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got the guy popping knocked out. He's He's been chipped away, you know. They just didn't like him anymore. Something happened. Yeah. Yeah. Or he was very important. They brought him <laughs> yeah. out, one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> Then you got this guy here, who's unfortunate because he's he's missing completely. All you got left is a leg and a foot and another foot. He was on this piece that popped out. So do you think that just chipped off naturally, or did they intentionally remove him? No idea. Hmm. Yanni Lobster, Lobster, you will hear that name if I've you heard start. That name, okay. Yeah. His theory is that every once in a while, these guys. He says these guys that are popped out like that are just as important as uh, the ones they can see. Because a lot of times these forms, the spirit form is coming out of the rock. And they would have used that in their story. Mm -hmm. He's coming through, you know. And so I don't know. That's like I said, that gets into more interpretation than I care to get into. But that's what he says. But there's little people all over this rock. Here's one right here. There's a I real see something right control. there, yeah. yeah. He's right here. There's a QT too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not Native American. <laughs> no. There's another abstract kind of human animal form there. Mm -hmm. Almost a box person. That's really obvious, yeah. Almost a box person. And this line right here, is, is that also something? It's something, but I don't know what. Kind of looks like part of something. It's a, couple, like, a little bit of a couple popping out of there. Oh, well, yeah, okay. It's kind of like half of an yep. unfinished something. I think so. Yeah. And see, there's Thomas, or Toma, uh, right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you lower the light, you start getting more stuff. See, he's very obvious, nicely formed lines, really straight. Someone has great handwriting, yeah. Look at this right here. This guy here is almost gone completely. Oh my goodness. But it's, uh, 
It's the mirror of that little design over there. Oh, that's so wild. Wow. That's what makes this so hard. <laughs> that's why there's only about a dozen of us doing this. I can see why you got so into it. It's like provocative and something. There's a uh, one really, really, really fine basket carved up here, inscribed. Here it is, right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Do you see it? Yeah, I do. Like just barely. Well, shoot it and see if you can do anything with it, because that is the. It's actually the showed up pretty well on the. That camera. is the hardest. We we do not have a good photograph of that design. Wow. Let me see if I can get a photograph of that. another site real close by yeah oh. over on the other side it's a little more obvious mm -hmm. but it's yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know it looks just like it but it's a, a square a rectangle with the X patterns going all through it kind of like a Union Jack <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> so we have that same very similar design okay. 10 miles from here wow these guys here you got this this is cultural not sure what's going on there it's just two lines this uh this where's it at right here this piece here this actually is the middle of the road the road came through came over the rock this is the tongue of a buggy oh. as the horses or mules or oh, oxen were dragging yeah. the buggy over it buried into the dirt and so that's human damage that's human damage yes ma'am that is from that is from oxen or horses to the tongue of the buggy. This is, these guys here were completely buried. We had the fire truck out here with water and literally elementary school kids. <laughs> we're running a fire hose and the water's washing off and these guys started popping out. And we actually had people oh, wow. saying, there's nothing under there. This was done last week. You know, they're actually, the people say it, the naysayers were here when this happened. <laughs> and we're like, okay, well, there's an 1822 road we just removed. And these are under, you know. Wow. So, Definitely predating 1822 then. Yep. Yeah. And so these guys, and once again, you have this pattern of three and three figures. Mm -hmm. And then off to the side, you got the fourth figure. There's one here that's hidden. He is extremely hard to see. He is. I like to see him. I'll have to get the light just right. There you go. There's his head right there. Okay. Now yep, you're... yep, there he is. And it's another one, what Tom would call a cupule on top of the box. Uh-huh. But it's heavily eroded. This one's had a hard life. But he's three. Then you got the one over here. We excavated further. We pulled, we kept using probe rods to find the rock. And as long as we found a rock, we dug out. We finally ran out of drawings. And when we ran out of drawings, that was the end of that. So this is the end of? This is the end. Okay. And what about these little marks here? Uh, those are cultural. cultural. They absolutely okay. are cultural. These are part of this, this design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these guys really pop out. I don't know if it's because they're bigger or if they're just more incised. They're, they're, they're less wear. Yeah, they must have been preserved the a little bit better. The soil here, I'm sure, was continually being ground onto this rock surface, you know, because this is where the main traffic was, because you can just tell. That's the mm -hmm. tongue of that buggy. So there was a oh, years of human like, traffic. Yeah, and it just was sense. turning the dirt up, and it just wore this guy out, you know, basically. <laughs> and over there, you didn't get a lot of traffic, but the roadbed covered it. And so it preserved it. Hmm. And what's really interesting about this, and we don't have, we have no idea what's going on there, you got these two forms before the men in boxes that once again look like letters. You know, these weird little designs. But they're not letters, they're just, an, they're just an abstract design. I guess they're male. Yeah. You can tell that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, I'm a well, cheater. Well, obvious, yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that kind of led, and honestly, you see that repeated on this rock, but then you don't. Then you have two forms, so it's a less female, you know, is that, is that where they're, this is a little deer track.
Oh yeah. But I mean, it's actually a really well made little deer track. You know? yes. <laughs> it's got little points, and it's you know the base is it's just like a it's a deer track. Uh huh. Yeah, it totally looks like one. So at some point, a deer was walking around on these rocks. Yeah, <laughs> they marked him. <laughs> marked itself. Well, he's definitely cited in my um, oh, in yeah. my research. Yeah, he, his book was actually one of the first ones I read when I started pursuing this topic. You know, just to see if it was worth looking into. Oh man! And his book made me realize it definitely was. He did. See, the thing what people really didn't realize about Tom. He would go somewhere and say, oh, Dr. Charles, how are you doing? You know, everything's great. You know, he would laugh. And then I, I asked him, I said, Tom, why do you laugh every time someone calls you Dr. Charles? You know, are you, he said, I dropped out in ninth grade. <laughs> really? Really? He said, yeah, he said, I made it through 10th grade, maybe. And he wore, his father was construction work. And he drug those boys all over the country. And so when Tom was old enough to hit the road and go to work, he hit the road and went to work. And he 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 was just gifted with an intellect that allowed him to go anywhere in life he wanted to go. He was a brilliant man. And he ended up, he loved collecting artifacts. And so he fell on a construction site off of, when they were building, actually they were building Little John Coliseum in Clemson, the basketball arena. He fell off one of the pieces of equipment, messed his back up. Oh my goodness. He was on disability and home, you know, had surgery and all. And as he saw this guy out in the middle of a field with a notebook, and it's a field he picked arrowheads up on. And so he walked out there and said, what you doing? And so I'm an archeologist with South Carolina issue at the college archaeology. He said, oh, really? Well, I pick up arrowheads here. And he's like, well, yeah, all right. Well, show me where you find stuff. And so he hit it, and they became buddies. And that guy actually put him as, like, his assistant for that dig. So Tom had nothing else better to do, so he just followed that guy around. That turned, it actually turned into a, a job at Skia as a cultural resources guy. He wow. would go around and record collections because they realized here this guy off the street knows more about artifacts and typography and has, he's already cataloged some of this stuff. When he sees this is different than that, he would, this is different, I'm finding this, is, you know, and so he marked it. He's an unbelievable researcher and catalogs. All right, you're going to go and we're going to start doing a paleo point survey. Do you, so he went all over the state checking out local collections and recording artifacts. And he built a career from that mm -hmm. and turned into a state archaeologist. Wow. Archaeologist for the state of South Carolina. That's incredible. It just goes anyone, to show anyone can do anything. Anyone can do it. <laughs> he just had the wherewithal and the knowledge, just the inherent knowledge mm -hmm. to make it happen. Wow. You know, and so, and so that's why he actually, that's why he, I think he does so well looking after me was because I was kind of doing the same thing. I was, I liked picking up artifacts. I liked hunting there. I was in there interested in history. And he's like, well, come on. And so for 20 something years, he worked with me just to teach me archeology span from the ground up, literally from the ground up. Mm -hmm. 